it's Golgara. I saved you the five minutes if you want. I think a common opinion is the dungeon bosses in Tears of the Kingdom are better than the Breath of the Wild bosses. The Blood Ganons got old fast. It was a solid fight, but not amazing, and got repetitive when you fought it for a fourth time. Tears of the Kingdom took a much better approach as the dungeon bosses were all drastically different in terms of aesthetics and how you face each battle. There are even references to former Zelda bosses or enemies, which I do love. The creativity behind the bosses is so much better in this game, besides this guy. I am quite happy about it. I'm not sure if any of these bosses are top 5 Zelda bosses of all time, but dang, I'll take what we got. So the question for today is, which boss was the best in Tears of the Kingdom? And while the game has many neat bosses lying around the overworld, I am just looking at dungeon bosses for this question. If you didn't have a brain fart to start this video, I'm going with Kolgera. The boss of the Wind Temple is a massive dragonfly looking creature that is the source of the harsh weather around the Rito village. The fight is quite fun. Kolgera emerges from the ancient ship to face you and your Rito buddy. You fly around in the skies above the ship and defeat it by hitting its weak spots with arrows, preferably with fire arrows to melt the ice. The game mechanics work great too for this. Being a fight that requires flying, you would be nervous that struggles a little bit. But no, it works very, very well. I think the fight is great, and it's best I get into more detail and explain why. I love the theme of this fight. This fight is set in a perfect atmosphere for this kind of boss. And it gets me excited for how well they set up this stage. Kind of, I'm kind of sad we can't redo this fight, which is, I guess is a bit of a lie is I think you can find Hogara in the depths. But the main fight in the Wind Temple is quite the setting. There are many ways you could have gone with a Wind Temple boss knowing that you're going to face something in a ship flying above a freezing mountain. And the ship itself can give good options for a boss fight too, like they used that a few games ago for a sea monster. A quite an ugly sea monster. But with all the space around the ship, and being a temple based on flying, a monster that has the ability to fly makes a ton of sense. Adding in many ice attacks and being weak to the fire just adds more to the theme. It covers both flying, big for the Ritos, and cold weather, which makes sense as you are high above the Hebra snowy mountain range. And you gotta applaud how well the theme is here. There is some heavy resemblance to Wind Waker tunes in this fight, which I'm gonna dive into that a bit later, but they spin the tune to give it more of a cold, arctic feel to this fight. All while still remaining a battle style beat, knowing that you are facing something fierce and menacing that is trying to end you. Man, this theme is terrific, and it alone sets this fight above the rest of this game. For a Zelda game, you yeah, wouldn't think that flying is a common ability. Like, sure, we used to have the hook shot and claw shot, but that was more just getting to higher ledges. But damn, not only is that the case for this game, it is used very well here. The win from the boss and being basically in zero gravity leads to Link always having an updraft to ride. So you can always pull out your paraglider to increase the height and put it away to decrease it. I will say, flying boss fights can be hard to make, like, I feel like most games will probably screw it up. Zelda, on the other hand, absolutely nails it. Maybe I shouldn't be shocked as many of these game mechanics are absolutely nailed. But damn, this is so well done for the fight. You can always position yourself to evade Kolgara's attack. It's not a struggle to do so, but also not a cakewalk. It's a pretty fair difficulty. I would have bet that most fights like this are bad due to poor game design, which really is unfair to the player. The fact that this is true, and on top of how awesome flying works in this fight, really makes the point stand out. You got to applaud the designers for their work on this segment. It must be really hard to pull off this kind of fight, but they absolutely nailed it. There is another big element to this fight that I haven't really talked much about yet, but it may be my favorite part. Any Zelda fan will be able to relate this boss to a previous one. The Wind Waker had a Wind Temple as well, a temple buried deep in the sea. It really used the Wind and Drafts well to get around this dungeon, and it ends with a fight against the Sand Seal Mulgara, which Mulgara was a pretty fun fight, but its theme was absolutely terrific. I still love the music to this day. So here we are with the second Wind Temple to the Zelda series, and man, do they pay respect to the first one. While this boss is frozen and more of an insect versus seal, there are some pretty clear resemblances to the Zion and its attacks. Defeating it is different, as you don't have a hookshot in this game, and quite frankly I'm a little sad that it's still not around, but there are still so many references to what Morgara is. And I love throwbacks like this, and it speaks to how highly and well done this series is that you can have great ones like this. The fact that Zelda for almost 40 years has been this dominant a franchise, oh man, just gets me excited for what's coming up next for it. Another note, is it not weird to think The Wind Waker came out 20 years ago? Like. Damn, I really, really enjoy this fight. I am so happy that the dungeon boss fights were much better than in Breath of the Wild, and Kolgara is a great example of that. The fight almost doesn't work too, but the game is designed so well that even flying-based fights just are absolutely fun. And of course you've got to acknowledge the references to Kolgara and the Wind Waker, which I think takes this fight up another level. Will Zelda boss fights keep this up? It seems like the wide variety we used to have in the old games with all the dungeons those are probably gone, we're kinda stuck with like 4 dungeon bosses now. But fights like Hokera will always show why Zelda boss fights are absolutely terrific. 
man, just what a good fight this is.